Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Impact Wrestling review. We're about to hop right on into this thing. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. Missed last week, couldn't do it. Had a lot of things going on last Saturday, but I am here today about to break it all down. Another episode. Feel free to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified of every video that I make. So, we're going to start right at the top. It was Rich Swan versus Ethan Page. And I got to say, first takeaway, it's going to be 13 takeaways from this episode of Impact. And my first takeaway is the X Division does it again. Like, I'm not all that big a fan of Ethan Page. But I got to say that this was really the first match that I really enjoyed this match from Ethan Page. I really enjoyed Rich Swan versus Ethan Page. I feel like he did a great job. Rich Swan did a great job. The tempo was up pace as normal with the X Division. And we had a nice spot. The spot of the match to me was the super kick party that we had going back and forth. And the match ended with the Phoenix Splash. It's Rich Swan would pick up the victory. And coming after that, these takeaways go hand in hand. So my second takeaway is the OVE fake out. We had Sammy Callahan and Rich Swan, excuse me, Sammy Callahan and OVE come down to ringside to greet Rich Swan. And Sammy Callahan said, spoiler alert, tonight is the night. And they wanted Rich Swan to join OVE. Rich Swan had some hesitation. And finally he joined. And I got to admit, for about 10 seconds, I was like, man, this is pretty cool. This whole story has played out. And he actually joined OVE. I didn't see that one coming. They got me with that one. And, of course, we had the OVE fake out Rich Swan, Super kicked all of them, laid them all out. And he is not a part of OVE. The Rich Swan versus Sammy Callahan feud continues. I got to admit for a minute, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see Rich Swan and OVE. It didn't make a... It, well, I won't say it didn't make a ton of sense because it did make sense because Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan has plenty of history. But... It's very interesting. They will oppose each other, and I'm pretty sure we will get that X Division match very soon enough. My next takeaway, third takeaway, is the LAX meetup. LAX was in uh, the backstage area that they are always in, and Conan was going back and forth with them, said that they would get their rematch. They wanted their rematch. Conan said that he would get it for them, and he said that he wanted to do things his way. So after that, Next takeaway, fourth takeaway is an ace debut. Ace Austin versus Jake Atlas. And I gotta say, I didn't know anything about Ace A A Ace Austin. Excuse me. I want to see what he was all about. I heard great things about him. I like this entrance. And entrance, I'm old school, man. I'm old school enough to where I started watching wrestling in the early 90s. I call that old school. I, the entrance matters to me. Like, if you got a bad entrance, that's just, that, that could kill you. I can name countless wrestlers that just have uninteresting entrances, and I have no interest in them because of it. So he had a very great entrance. I love it. And he's very great. He's very great in the ring. I thought that Jake Atlas got in a little bit too much offense, as it should have been a showcase of Ace Austin. It was a decent enough showcase. He showcased his athleticism. And... It didn't go for very long. It shouldn't have went for very long. Ace Austin picked up the win. And I got to say, I'm intrigued. I want to see what happens with Ace Austin, what kind of storylines they put him in, and where he fits into the division. Is he going to shoot for the heavyweight division, or is he going to be in the X division? We shall see as time rolls on. My next takeaway, Johnny and Talia. Look, this investigative reporter, I do not like him. That's my next takeaway. I'm Menendez. I do not like this guy. Johnny and Talia was being interviewed by Menendez, and I know his snick is to be annoying, but it's not very entertaining. That's my problem with the whole thing. He's obviously ticking Johnny off, talking about how, you know, it's despite you having a neck injury, you should still de defend the title. And like it's just not be a be a man of a, your word, and it's it's just annoying. It's not entertaining to me. And Johnny Impact versus Brian Cage, this is starting to lose some luster. I gotta say, it's just starting to lose a little bit of luster to me. So moving on, we have Reno Scum, and my next takeaway is Reno. What? 
We had Reno Scum and they were going at Falaba and KM. They didn't like that victory. They thought it was a fluke. And I gotta say that this is not the greatest of ways to debut Reno Scum in my opinion. They should have debuted with a win. Now they have a opening loss. I didn't get to do the review last week. I hated that. Like you debut these guys and we're supposed to take them seriously. And I take, still take them seriously to this point, but I just do not like, like those guys debuting with a loss. But moving on, my next takeaway from this episode is that Eddie Edwards and Eli Drake continues. This feud, partnership, or whatever you want to call it, it continues. Alicia came down. And she talked about what's next for her, talking about how her contract was expiring. And out of nowhere, here comes the Desi Hit Squad. It's like, what are they doing here? And we get this male misogynistic, women don't belong in wrestling. You need to stay home and cook and clean. And it was very annoying. And she slapped him. And Eddie Edwards came down. And he saved the day until he started getting beat down. The numbers game got to him. And I. Uh, and Eli Drake, excuse me, came down and saved Eddie Edwards' day. And backstage afterwards, we got Eddie Edwards, we got Eli Drake. Eli Drake wanted to form a tag team partnership. Eddie Edwards didn't want to do it at first, but he obliged. And they will face off with the Daisy Hit Squad next week. We will see how this turns out. I'm not very interested in this Eddie Edwards versus Eli Drake storyline. I thought if they would have just kept it toward... Both guys wanted to wanting to be the better wrestler or something along the lines of just the wrestling ring. I would have been more interested in it, but the whole I want the old Eddie Edwards back. Eh, I'm not all that interested in it. It's not a horrible storyline, but I'm just not all that interested in it, to be honest. So my next takeaway is that the Rascals do it again. Look, I always say that the 70 show skits. They can be very hot or cold, very hit or miss, or sometimes they can be hit and miss. Initially, this was a miss to me. They were talking about robots, and Desmond Xavier brought out a mask, talked about how him and Zachary Wentz needed to wear these masks to face off with the Lucha Brothers. But then it turned into a hit. Trey Miguel started talking about Moose in his pink jacket, and it was hilarious. Moose tried to hit on Melissa Santos. She wasn't having any of that earlier. And it was hilarious. I loved every bit of it. Moose looked like a bald Mark Henry in that pink jacket. I just wanted to say that. Look, it, at the end of this 70s show skit, it was a hit. So I didn't like it initially, but I liked it overall at the end. So moving on, my next takeaway is a great disappointment. The Great War. Jordan Grace, Kira Hogan, Sue Young versus Dark Alley and undead made of honor and i gotta say that man and sue young excuse me i gotta say that i was expecting more out of this match when the match initially hit we had the the lighting to which eh, i'm not really that big a fan on but i don't mind it i was expecting tables and chairs i'm like like man where's the tables and chairs we had the Great War. It was named the Great War. Impact has a recent history when they have big names on matches like Decay or Delete or the the, the final deletion with, with Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy. It tends to be crazy matches with weapons. And I don't know if I was... I, I, I wasn't ex necessarily expecting a match to where it took place outside. I would don't didn't mind it that it was taking place in the arena, but it had to be some kind of no disqualification type match. It was a regular match. I was not expecting that. That's not a war at all, in my opinion. So as for the match itself, it was a decent match. Overall, there was nothing wrong with the match. I enjoyed it for the most part. It really picked up when Rosemary, excuse me, got the hot tag. And she ran wild, and we got, and the match, once the match broke down, it became really exciting. And at the end of the day, Rosemary would pick up the win after Jordan Grace Spear. So, Rosemary, Gary Hogan, Jordan Grace picks up the win. They get a 
to, excuse me, Dark Alley back. I'm on one in this match, but I didn't really enjoy it overall. I felt like it should have been a war and it wasn't quite a war. So moving on, my next takeaway is go away, Glenn Gilberti, please. Glenn Gilberti was backstage, ran into Kony. We got this whole segment full of Glenn Gilberti. He's running into Conan, then he ran into Killer Cross, stuck the trust by Killer Cross, he thought he was dying callous. He ran out of that. And eventually he got all the way to the commentary table. And that led us to Scarlet Bardo coming out. And Glenn Gilberti, she clowned Glenn Gilberti. He hops into the ring. And he's we have another male misogynistic segment. And I'm like, we needed two in one night? Like, we didn't have anything else to talk about tonight. We need two of those. And, like, why is Glingo Birdie even in programming? It makes me want to pull my hair out. Normally, Impact is not a program to where, you know, I can, they, there's things on Impact that I can agree with or disagree with. But there's never things that I look at and I'm like, I do not want to see this on programming whatsoever. Ever and Glenn Gilberti is something or a person that I do not want to see on impact programming. So he's going at Scarlet Bordeaux, talking about how women's wrestling wasn't interesting, it hasn't been interesting since the bra and panties matches, and there are none of those no more. And women's wrestling is not interesting anymore, you don't belong in the ring. So Scarlet Bordeaux challenges him to a match, and Glenn Gil Gilberti storms off and like. We're going to get this at the next pay-per-view. And, like, why are we doing this? Scarlet Bordeaux. At the, 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 the very least that I can take from this uh, interaction is that the fans to Scarlet Bordeaux. I thought she was a heel at first, but obviously they're going uh, to have her as a face. And the, the fans cheered her. So, in that aspect, the job was well accomplished. But overall... We couldn't have somebody else in Scarlet Bordeaux's first big match. She is, for lack of a better term, turning, starting to be a star in the knockouts division. Probably at the top. So, we got to have Glenn Gilberti as our first match. We couldn't find somebody else. We couldn't find a talented knockout backstage to come up and rant about Scarlet Bordeaux not being a... Uh, Physically involved in the knockouts division, taking up all of the time and not even being in the wrestling ring. We couldn't have a heel, a knockout come out and say that. I would have enjoyed that. That would have set up a great match. That would have set up a fantastic match for Scarlett Bordeaux in which she can pick up the victory. But we have Scarlett Bordeaux and Glenn Gilberti. I have no interest in that whatsoever. My next takeaway is Jordan Grace. Look, she ain't with the crazy stuff. So, we had Rosemary, and we had Allie, and we had Kira Hogan outside. And Kira Hogan wanted to stay with Rosemary, and she wanted to see the old Allie back. And Rosemary wasn't having it. She told Kira Hogan and Joy Grace to kick rocks, basically. Told them to go away. And Joy Grace was like, you know what? I don't want nothing with this. I done did my job. I want to go away. Kira Hogan didn't necessarily want to go away. We'll see. How this, this storyline turns out going for it. My next takeaway is that we got a sweet main event, baby. The Lucha Brothers versus the Rascals. And I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, the, the match really got going when the Lucha Brothers, uh, when they had their multiple double teams in the beginning of the match. It was fantastic uh, television. I enjoyed that. Desmond Xavier flip over the turnbuckle. That was ridiculous. Like, the dude's athleticism is off the choice. Like I say, I put him up there with your ricochets, with your phoenixes. And, like, his athleticism, his athleticism is fantastic to watch. The match would end with a Penta driver as the Lucha Brothers would pick up the win. And this was an enjoyable match. Didn't really get the time that I thought it should have got. I slept around six minutes, so I enjoyed it for the most part, and 
We'll see how it all plays out with the Rascals from here on in. We pretty much know what's going on with the Lucha Brothers. And after the match, we got my last takeaway is Conan the Promoter. So we got Conan going at it with the Lucha Brothers. And Lucha Brothers told him to tell NAX to stay away from their mask. And that they didn't want to want a rematch. They didn't want to give them a rematch. But Conan said... You must forget who you're talking to. You are going to give them a rematch. And Pentagon says at the end, why are we listening to him? Whether it was Pentagon or Phoenix, they say, why are we listening to him? Or why is he bossing us into another rematch? And we fade it to black from there. I'm interested into what happens with LAX and the Lucha Brothers. It seems like both teams are tired of Conan demanding them and bossing them around. So we'll see. If they both turn out and say, Conan, look, we love you, but you need to get out of the way in all of this. We'll see how this all turns out going forward. Let me know your thoughts on Impact Wrestling, uh, the show overall, whether that's the main event, the Lucha Brothers versus the Rascals. Uh, anything you got, let me know down below in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at 2 sweet Pod or at OMG Corey B. That's the number two, Sweet P-O-D or at OMG Corey B.